And the last thing uh, that I want to say is, I want to talk about uh, 10 qualities that have been identified as uh, by these kuffar. Uh, Wal-hikmatu dalatul mu'min. The wisdom is the last uh, beast of the, of the, the mu'min. And I want to say there are many women that I could use it as examples and I think it's important uh, to mention uh, one of our most successful women. And that is Aisha radiallahu anha one of the greatest intellectuals and scholars of this ummah, who was in the house of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa not wasting her time in frivolity, but learning and absorbing the knowledge of this deen to the point where all of the Sahaba recognized Aisha and went to her for guidance and for fatwa. And, and this, and Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who is the model of a woman who, again, much is unknown of her life, but we know who she produced. Hassan wa Hussein, Shababa Ahl al-Jannah, the two youth of the people of Jannah, and look at their lives, Hassan and Hussein. And this is a woman who her children are a testimony of who she is. And I will say every single man that I mention, behind him is their mother. Every single man of success in this, in this dunya and in akhirah, behind that man is the mother or the murabbiya who raised uh, that man. And the women should recognize that, that we have countless women in the history of Islam whose names are unknown to us. But the works that they produced are in the children that they produced. The men and the women that they produced. And Malik ibn Anas, there is no Malik ibn Anas without Umm Malik. There is no Malik ibn Anas without the mother of Malik, who when he went to study first, she, he said she used to tie the turban on my head. His mother used to tie the turban on his head. And she would take, uh, she would say to him, خُذْ مِنْ حِلْمِ ابْنِ هُرْمَوْسْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَأْخُذَ مِنْ عِلْمِ Take from his forbearance before you take from his knowledge. Because the woman knows the importance of forbearance. And the, the murdiya, the murabiya of the Prophet is Halima, is the woman of Hilm. You see? These are the successful people. The, 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 the ten qualities that were identified, and I looked at each one of these and I recognized them as valuable, and that's the only reason that I'm repeating them, were identified by a neuro neuropsychologist uh, who studied people that were successful in this world. And we have to recognize that because we have left the the, uh, the, uh, the, the models of success, the mentors of success, and the qualities and characteristics of success, we have become failures. And the people of dunya are ruling this world. And they're creating havoc everywhere. And unless we return to the uh, examples of success, we will have no success. The first one is, they say every successful person has a strong sense of purpose. You have to have a strong sense of purpose. What greater sense of purpose than to know that your goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What greater sense of purpose than to know that your goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The second uh, most identifiable characteristic is they seek out role models or mentors. And these mentors instill in them a sense of possibility. This is the reason, according to the Quran, why the Prophet ﷺ was given the stories of the Prophets who went before him to give him tathbeet, to make firm his heart that he would have success just as the Prophets before him had success despite all the tribulation. And so we have to look at the examples and the models of these early community and these great leaders because these are the people that instill in us a sense of possibility. You were given success on the day of Badr and you were weak and, and abased in the earth. The third identity is the strength of visualizing the goal. The strength of visualizing the goal. No one has a better visualization of his goal than the Messenger of Allah, who I literally described to Suraq ibn Malik the day that he would put on the bracelets of Kisra. The day that he would put on the bracelets of Kisra, and that happened when he stood before Umar ibn al-Khattab and the bracelets of Kisra were brought into the presence of Umar. And he said, the Prophet promised me that I would wear those bracelets. And Umar put them on Suraq ibn Malik. And this is the sense that he instilled in them. He told them you would enter into the palaces of Faisal and Kisra. 
And they had this sense on the day of the Khandaq, when the Sahaba knew that he had proved that he was true, the Munafiqun said that he's only promised you delusion. So the Prophet was instilling them a sense. He was giving them a vision. He was giving them, he was putting in their mind's eye a sense of where they would be. And he even told them that there is coming a time when a woman will leave Sham and go to Yemen on her camel and fear nothing but the wolves in the road because there would be security and safety by the justice that Islam brought. He told them that they would enter into Jerusalem. He promised them that they would have victory in Constantine. He promised them that they would have promised us because it hasn't happened yet that we would have victory in Rome. That Rome would be conquered by the Muslims. That Constantine, which is now Istanbul, though it left Islam, will come back to Islam and it will come back to Islam without the sword. The Muslims will only come to the gates of it and say, Allahu Akbar! And the people will remember and return to Islam. And so this is the vision that the Prophet ﷺ instilled in his Sahaba. It's a vision not of failure but of success. We are people of success and this religion is a deen of success. It's not a deen of failure. And the Prophet was the most successful human being that ever lived on the face of the earth. And this is by the shahada of the non-Muslims. If you read Michael Hart, the historian who wrote the 100 most important personalities in history, he said the most successful human being that's ever lived is the messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And this is by the witness of our own enemies. And the greatest witness is what your own enemies show testimony to. No one was more successful than the Messenger of Allah. And you have in him the best model, because he is the model and the mentor of success. And if we follow him, we have success. And the fourth, the fourth example is a positive sensory orientation, that you dwell on past successes and not failures. We should not dwell on our failures. We should only remember the successes of this ummah. And this is why Allah reminds us, وَلَقَدْ نَصُرُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمَ ذِلَّهُ Remember your past successes when you were weak, and Allah gave you victory in the earth. And so we have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us victory. And the next one is self-assurance. They know that they can succeed. They know that they can succeed. لا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم لعلونا إن كنتم مؤمنين. Do not be weak and do not grieve, and you are the uppermost. If you were believers, if you were believers, وإن يمسسكم قرح فقد مس القوم قرح مثله فقد مس القوم قرح مثله. And if you are afflicted by something, know that they are afflicted by it also. And your affliction is not their affliction because our affliction is a purification and a reward by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And their affliction is hasra, it's grief and despair and sorrow amongst them. قَتْرَاكُمْ فِي النَّارِ وَقَتْلَانَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Your qatra are in the hellfire and our qatra are in Jannah. Our dead are in Jannah. And the next thing, the sixth thing, I only have a few more so I'm almost done. The next thing is that they plan and organize. They know how to prioritize. They break down their goals into workable parts. That we have to become people of what they call in the medical community triage. That they look at the most important thing and they take that. We have people now that, that uh, they spend their argumentation about where you put your hands in the prayer, where your feet should be, where the, these things are known in the books of fiqh, we don't need to argument over them. You ask any uh, scholar of any worth and they'll tell you very clearly and there's different ways to do it because we're not supposed to get caught up in these trivial matters because this is the disease of the Talmudic rabbinical mind which asks what kind of cow, what color of cow, what they go into these and they say the devil's in the details, even in this society, you see, because this is what the pickiness, the picky minded, narrow minded, uh, simpleton people that spend their lives in trivial pursuit in matters of no concern. No, we have greater things. This is a universal deen. The Prophet is the universal man. The Prophet is raising us above this triviality and putting us into the most important matters, which is where is your heart. On the day that nothing will benefit them, not wealth or anything, except the one who comes with a sound heart. And so where is the heart in the prayer? Not where is the feet, where is the heart? Where is your heart in the prayer? Where is the heart? What are you watching? I knew a man recently who wouldn't pray behind a man because he saw six mistakes in his prayer. And I wanted to know, who are you watching? Your brother or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who are you in muraqaba of? Who's your uh, muraqaba for? What is your prayer for? You're sitting there watching the imam to see how many uh, mistakes that he makes in moving his finger? I mean, subhanAllah. These are diseases. And so we have to plan and organize. And organization, this is the only reason the corporations are successful, is because they know how to plan and organize. They plan way ahead of time. We can't even plan for tomorrow. 
the only thing I think now we've become good at planning is what we're going to eat for the next meal. People are very good at that and we're good at walimas. And I think if I was Khalifa, and you're lucky I'm not, but if I was Khalifa, I'd banish all of these walimas. I'd finish it off. We have m women being raped all over the place. We have Muslims being bombed. We have uh, uh, our mosques being destroyed. And we're busy, uh, how many sheep are going to be there? And how many belly dancers at that wedding? I heard of a wedding not too long ago that had nine belly dancers. Allahu Akbar, takbir. Do you know what kind of takbir? Takbir al janazah, the funeral prayer. That's what kind of takbir, four of them. So here, the next one is the ability to acquire necessary skills needed to succeed. And that means you have to identify where your weaknesses are. And one of our greatest weaknesses is we don't have scholars, neither from the men or the women. And we need to produce scholars that can guide our ummah. And everybody wants their child to be an engineer or a doctor. Why don't you want your child to be what the greatest thing that a human being can be? A da'yan illallahi. A bashir al nadira. Why don't you want to be from amongst the people that the Prophet said, the two parents of the one who memorizes the book of Allah will be given crowns of light on the Yom Qiyamah. Why don't we want to be from those people? Why don't we want to be from the people where your children, waladun salih, yad'u lahu, a righteous child who, who invokes Allah for them because their dunya won't help you. Their dunya won't help you. Your provision was written before you were born. Their dunya is not going to help you, but their akhirah will help you. So make your children people of akhirah, not people of dunya. And then the next is the patience. Sabr. وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُ وَصَابِرُ Be patient and enjoin others to patience. And I tell you, there are two lessons as far as I'm concerned that the Muslims have to learn. Because all of the tribulations coming to us are based on two things as far as I'm concerned. One is kibr and the other is, is the lack of patience. Kibr and the lack of patience until we get kibr out of our hearts and recognize that saying La ilaha illallah does not make you special because the munafiq says La ilaha illallah and he's lower than the kafir. He's lower than the kafir. And if you feel safe from nifaq, from hypocrisy, according to Hassan al-Basri, one of the greatest of the tabi'in, you're a munafiq. La ya'manu min al-nifaq illa munafiq. The only one that feels safe from nifaq is the munafiq. So if you feel safe from nifaq, because Umar ibn al-Khattab didn't feel safe from nifaq, he went to Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and said, Atarafiya ma tarafihim? Do you see in those munafiqeen what you see? Do you see in me what you see in them? Unshiduka billah, tell me by Allah, I want to know if Umar is a munafiq. And he said, oh, Allah, la, la ara ma ara I don't see in you what I see in them. So you have to ask yourself, and if you want the qualities of the munafiqun, it's in the Qur'an. They say on their tongues what's not in their hearts. They pray lazily. They don't remember Allah except a little bit. They're mutadabdib, they oscillate. You see, they're all there, you can find them in there. So you, we have to have patience, perseverance. And, and then perseverance. خَيْرُ الْعَمَارِ أَدْوَامُهَا وَنْقَلَّ Be persevering. لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى No one has except what they endeavor for, what they persevere for. وَأَنَّ سَعْيُهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى And he will see his endeavor. He will see his endeavor. We will see our سَعِي وَكَانَ سَعْيُهُ مَشْكُورًا And their endeavor was, uh, was uh, shown with gratitude by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَعْيًا مَشْكُورًا وَذَنْبًا مَغْفُورًا وَتِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورًا A سَعْي, an endeavor that Allah shows gratitude toward and Allah is shakur. And then the last thing is the ability to love what one is doing. To love what one is doing. Allahu Akbar. We have to love what we're doing. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ They love uh, Allah and Allah loves them. They're pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with them. And none of you truly believes until he loves uh, Allah and His Messenger more than he loves his own self. And so working for Allah and His Messenger would be the most beloved thing to him because he loves Allah and His Messenger. So this is the last thing, you have to love what you're doing. And if you find it difficult, They only give out infaq and they hate it, they detest it. So we have to start giving out and loving it, spending our money, fi subhanallah, and loving it. لا تنالون بر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون You don't reach bir righteousness until you give out what you love. What you love. So we have to love to give out. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.